Well, good morning and welcome back to Georgia after our uh, crazy little adventure last week in Alabama. Uh, so this week I'm staying very close to home because actually I'm going to be traveling later in the week. And also it's uh, because it's been super, super hot here uh, up in the mid 90s Fahrenheit, which I'm guessing is mid 30s um, centigrade. Uh, it's been like that for over a week and uh, a lot of the countries actually got uh, typhoon problems and flooding problems but here in the southeast it's uh, much more a case of super dry blue skies and really really hot so not much hiking um, because that I'm not I'm not so good in the in the heat um, so what I've decided to do is come as I say locally and I've come to a place called Pools uh, Mill Co Covered Bridge so the idea today is to take um, an infrared picture because as you know it's a blue sky day we're getting close to midday uh, so shadows are going to be harsh uh, having said that we're in a, a cloud at the moment which is quite nice but uh, no shadows are going to be harsh it's going to be blue sky so I'm going to take this infrared picture and what I want to do is I want to take it from composition and capture all the way through Lightroom and Photoshop and uh, to the finished result so that's the idea um, we're going to go see what we can find now. So I've actually come over the other side of the bridge uh, from where I was intending to be. A couple of reasons for that. On the far side there's um, a cascade, a slide, which is actually very popular during the, the summer. Uh, adults tend to bring kids here, help them uh, cool down in the summer heat. And so there's uh, a couple of kids turned up and they're screaming away over there and I just didn't want to be in their way. So I've come over this side and it's actually better at this time of day because uh, the sun is still slightly on this side. I'm still getting some sunlight on the actual bridge itself, though it's pretty high in the sky. So um, the, the shadows are quite strong and quite deep down uh, on the bridge. So I quite like that. Um, the actual view of the bridge itself is not quite as good, but I think for our purposes today it's just fine. So. Okay so when you're taking a an infrared picture and after you've got your composition kind of figured out what you want to do is to to make really a white balance preset. Now the reason for that is that when you're in post-production if you have control over the colors in the image then you can do a lot more in post-production so for example if something is blue then you can uh, tweak the blue uh, luminosity, the blue um, uh, saturation, things like that. So you can actually control specific areas within the scene as long as the color is clearly defined. And by setting a white balance preset we tend to get the leaves of the trees very white and other things within the scene tend to be a lot um, more defined in their color range so that they're easier to manipulate later on in the scene. So what I actually do is I take a picture of just this green foliage over here and I use that picture as my white balance preset before I go ahead and take the scene that I actually want within the image. So all I'm going to do here is to compose in my shot completely within the shot all of it be these leaves of green so that when I have that shot, I can use that as my uh, white balance preset. Okay, so if we look at this image here, this is the one that we took the picture of, then that is going to be our white balance preset. So now on this particular camera, if we go to uh, menu, then to white balance and into preset, and then what I want to do is select my image. So I go down here to select image and it's the very last one I chose. So I select that and press enter to complete that. So now we have the, the picture that we have just taken as the preset for our white balance in the image that we're going to compose and take. Okay, so fully framed up now. Um, I'm on at about uh, 30 millimeters and that's allowing me just to, to get the uh, tree on the right hand side just almost all the way down to the bottom of the trunk there 
and the same with the two trees on the left hand side we're almost to the bottom of their trunk uh, so we've got that nice green foliage at the base and the green all the way around of course uh, so that's framing the whole ish uh, the whole scene um, the shadow on the bridge is just about optimal I think at the moment because the lattice work that's underneath the the, the roof of the bridge uh, is in shadow but the roof itself and the the boards underneath are not so I'm thinking that it's, it's quite a good time as far as that's concerned um, and then I've got the reflection in the water I'm just cutting that off at the bottom of the lattice work so that's framing the bottom of the uh, image quite nicely as well and then of course we've got the the blue sky up there too so I've got it on a timer I'm at about f8 and about a 60th of a second um, and I've focused on the the first tree here um, the main tree in, in the foreground um, 60th of a second should uh, manage to freeze most of the leaves as well and everything like that so I'm gonna go ahead and take that right now and just check that looks good certainly good enough for uh, our purposes today okay so I'm back here in the office and this is the image that I want to be able to um, show you uh, but I thought it would be good just to show you quickly this is the this is the picture of the foliage that I took right at the very beginning in order to get the preset for the the white balance correct in the camera before I took the the infrared image so I just wanted to show you that first most of it is um, leaves of trees that's in the approximate area of where we were taking the picture but this one here is our composition and the very first thing that we have to do with an infrared image is to take it into Photoshop and to change the, the channel mix. So in order to do that, you can either do a control or a command E or just come up to the top here and go photo edit in Photoshop. And once it finally pulls itself up, um, here it is you can see now over here I have my actions and if I click on that there's one down here which says convert IR channel mixer so I can just select that hit the play button and it'll do the job for me and this is what I'm looking to do but if we go back to the beginning you can also do this manually by just going to image adjustments channel mixer and within this, within the red channel, you want to take a uh, red, which is at 100, put that down to zero, take the blue, move it up to 100. And then likewise with the blue channel, you want to reduce the blue down to zero and increase the red up to 100. And as you can see, that's exactly the same as what we had earlier. Now you can do adjustments from here in Photoshop, of course, uh, but I like to save that and take it back into Lightroom and do my adjustments or some of my adjustments from here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to, uh, well, I can start to look at the image and I'm going to start to uh, decide, okay, how do I want to um, develop this? for the final image. And of course, there's lots of different ways that you can do that. Looking at this particular one, I'm seeing that despite having the, the white preset pre-done, we're getting quite a lot of uh, mixture between the blue and the magenta down here. So by adjusting one color, you can't really expect only a certain object to change color without it affecting the other. But I don't think that that's a big issue here because all of the trees are all one color. The sky is a different one. And I think that we can manage this situation down here. So if, for example, we went to magenta and we dropped the, the luminance, we can, uh, we can adjust that only that part of the image. Likewise, if we went to the blue, 
adjusted the luminance, we can darken down the sky. We could increase or decrease the saturation of the blue. See, that's quite nice there. Again, you could drop down the, um, the saturation a little bit and you've got nice pink trees with a grey everywhere else. And that's quite often the way that some people do infrared, they leave it, leave it like that. But let's take it back to where we were and on this occasion what I'm going to do is just give it a little bit more contrast by using the curve tool here, dropping the, the darks a little bit, making an S curve and pushing the highlights back up a little bit. That gives it a little bit more um, a little bit more contrast and you can see that the blue sky is way too saturated and that the um, the blue down in here, which is probably a reflection of that blue sky up above, is also darkening this part down here as well. Um, but I'm not too worried about that because it looks fine when I convert that over to black and white, which of course I could do in a different program again. Uh, I might give a better black and white result, but I like to have these uh, channel mix, uh, these um, luminosity available to me here because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drop down this blue and you can see that sky giving a nice separation between the, the trees and the sky now um, and if I zoom in you can see that if I just adjust the aqua at the same time it helps with the transition between the trees and the and the sky at the same time, if I drop the purple a little bit and the magenta, we're actually darkening down these limbs or these trunks of these trees as well, uh, which helps to define them against the leaves in the background. So overall, I'm quite liking that. Um, this is obviously a, just a very quick rough and ready. Uh, so having done that, um, looking at the composition, I don't really like this limb up here. I could clone that out or I could just uh, give it a little crop. But that's weighting everything over to this side of the image a little bit. Um, and I think what I'll do is I'll bring... No, I quite like that. I quite like that. So I think I'll leave that where it is right now. But I need to help rebalance the uh, the image a little bit and this uh, darker area here I'm not liking that so I think I'm going to take uh, the ellipse tool create a nice ellipse over that area take that a little bit round and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to press this uh, invert mask um, button here and that means that the adjustment is going to happen within this ellipse rather than outside here in the in the main image so I just want to brighten this area so it's a bit more uniform with the rest of the this side of the image so I'll bring that up to yeah about there but one stop is pretty good um, maybe a little bit on the highlights too there we go. And do I look again? Then this bright area in here is also, it's just a little too much in the background there and we're losing a little bit of definition of the, the leaves. So I'm going to grab another ellipse and just bring it across this sort of area here. Let me drag that up. Touch. And again, click the invert mask radial and then I just want to bring down the highlights in there give that a little bit more definition um, maybe just reduce the feather so it goes all the way to the, the edges a little bit more that's better okay let's just uh, hit the F button have a look and see yep I think that's pretty good so very rough and ready um, but I do I do quite like the image um, I like the 
the trees here um, cutting across and sort of framing the, the whole thing. I like the reflection, uh, which I, I didn't use any filters by the way. Uh, one of the reasons I didn't use a, a polarizer was because I didn't want to affect the reflection. I like the reflection in this particular image. And there was no reason uh, with the infrared to um, use any graduated uh, neutral density filters or to slow the water down with um, any normal neutral density. So no need for any filters in this particular image, um, but I quite like it overall. So you can let me know if you like it also. Um, as I said, this is a very quick um, video this week just because I'm going to be traveling later on. Um, and if you like this kind of video, then let me know in the comments. So I'll possibly do a few more like this. But also, um, if you have any more questions regarding the infrared, the infra infrared conversion, uh, you can ask me in the comments. I'll try and answer them. Or if it's a, a bigger topic, maybe keep it for another time. But for now, as I say, hopefully my next uh, destination will be uh, further afield and uh, looking forward to that so tune in next week for uh, further adventures but for now thanks for watching and we'll see you next time mm -hmm.